This is the really sad story about a 19-year-old college student named Sade Robinson who went missing on April 1st in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She was just walking down North Commerce Street when she mysteriously disappeared. Her family got worried when she didn't answer her phone or show up to work, so they reported her missing. The next day, things got even worse. Sade's car was found on fire in an alley about two miles from where she was last seen. And later that same day, someone found a severed human leg in a park near Lake Michigan. The police started thinking this could be a murder case and brought in some potential suspects, like this guy named Maxwell S. Anderson, who had blood on his stairs at home and talked to Sade before she vanished. But let's stop for a second and ask this question. Why does he look like a dirty Archie Comics character? It looks like he's gonna say, I'll gladly pay you tomorrow for some meth today. Like they haven't updated his character design since the 1940s. Hello strangers, and welcome back to the Strange Bar and Grill. I'm your host, JP, and this is the sad story of Sade Carlina Robinson. Sade was born on May 10th, 2004, in Vicksburg, Mississippi, to her parents, Sheena and Carlos Robinson. She had a younger sister named Adriana. When she was two, her mom moved the girls to Milwaukee because things weren't working out with their dad. He ended up moving to Florida, so Sade kind of grew up in both states going back and forth to spend time with each parent. In high school, Sade did really well and even graduated early. She was super responsible and hardworking. She secretly applied for jobs and got into college to study criminal justice. Her parents were so proud of her. Sade was an awesome big sister too. She got her little sister a job at the same place she worked as a hostess. She also had another job at a pizza place that she'd been at for like five years. Everyone loved Sade. She was always smiling and making people feel welcome. So here's this 19 year old girl going to school full time, working two jobs, paying for her own apartment. She had big plans. She was about to graduate with a 3.5 GPA and wanted to join the Air Force. But then everything just fell apart when she disappeared. On March 31st, Sade spent the day with her family for Easter. They had a big meal and hung out late into the night. But Sade had to go back to her place because she had work in the morning. The next day, her mom video called her while she got ready, which was normal for them. They talked about Sade's night and her plans to get a haircut. Then they said bye and Sade promised to call her mom after work. Now, we don't know how Sade was planning to get to work that day, but someone saw her walking down the street about a mile from the pizza place that she worked at. But then she never showed up for her shift, which was really, really weird because Sade was never late without calling. Her manager got worried and called Sade's mom to see what was up. Sheena, Sade's mom, said the last she heard from Sade was when she randomly asked to borrow 15 bucks, which was really, really odd. Sheena was scared and spent the whole day trying to reach Sade. When she couldn't, she had to report her missing to the police. The next day, the cops found Sade's car on fire in an alley. They told Sheena and she was heartbroken, but still hoping Sade was alive somewhere. Family and the police started searching hard for her, but then later that same day, someone found a human leg in a park. The police thought it might be connected to Sade's case, so they made it a homicide investigation. Over the next few days, more body parts started showing up along with the blanket that belonged to Sade. Then on April 4th, they arrested this 33-year-old guy named Maxwell S. Anderson. They think he might be involved because they found blood on his stairs and in his bedroom. Now, when I originally started writing this, the police were still waiting on tests to see if the blood actually matched the body parts that they found. Well, I can now say for sure that Maxwell has been formally charged with killing and dismembering Sade. So let's take a deeper look at this piece of shit left out in the sun for too damn long named Maxwell. So apparently Maxwell is 33 years old. He owns his duplex in Milwaukee. The police searched it and talked to his neighbor, William, who said Maxwell was super low key and you'd only see him sometimes out walking his dogs. The cop said Maxwell worked at a bunch of different bars and clubs over the years but he liked short-term jobs so he could kind of bounce around a lot. But here's the thing, Maxwell has a criminal record. He's been arrested for driving drunk and domestic violence. 
In 2014, he got charged for shoving a relative and breaking her stuff. When the cops came, he apparently said, what are you gonna do, shoot me? And then he stole the woman's car. He crashed it into a deck and got arrested. The woman thought he was on drugs or something because he was just acting so bizarre and so strange. And he ended up pleading guilty in that case. Then in 2015, he got arrested again at another relative's house for breaking things and grabbing their phone when they tried to call the cops on him. He got hit with four misdemeanors and pleaded guilty to three of them. And in 2019, he straight up beat up a random guy who tried to break up an argument between Maxwell and some woman on the street. And there was actually a video of Maxwell just wailing on this poor guy before dragging him to the ground. He admitted to hitting the guy but wouldn't say why. He got probation, of course, community service, and had to pay the victim's medical bills and lost wages. So basically, he got off with another slap on the wrist. So yeah, so with a history like that, you can see how this little itty bitty man could work his way up to kill. The blood in his house definitely points to him being guilty of something bad, but obviously, you have to say he's innocent until proven guilty, right? But I don't work with the damn police, so I can say it, he's probably guilty. More than likely, he is guilty. He looks guilty, and he looks like he don't wash his ass. So just one week after Maxwell S, and the S stands for stank ass, Anderson, was arrested, he was officially charged with killing and dismembering 19-year-old Sade Carlina Robinson. This confirms what everyone suspected over the last two weeks, that the human remains found in a park on April 2nd belonged to Sade, who was reported missing that very same day. Using security camera footage, witness statements and phone tracking records, the police put together a timeline of Sade, Maxwell, her phone and her car's movements over a 16 hour period, starting from when they met for dinner. Police believe Sade and Maxwell met on April 1st for a first date. They had dinner, went to a bar, then went back to Maxwell's house on the south side of Milwaukee. And now police are unsure of the exact details, but they believe the murder took place shortly after returning to Maxwell's house. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office and Milwaukee Police Department said they're still searching for remains and investigating a motive. They wouldn't comment on evidence found in Anderson's home during a search, but the complaint mentions that blood was found on his bedding and on the walls leading down to the basement. Maxwell is now facing charges of first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson. At his court appearance, his bail was set to $5 million. The sheriff noted that much of Robinson's remains are still missing and that Maxwell seems to have gone to extreme lengths to cover up her death. After that hearing, Robinson's mother, Sheena Scarborough, was visibly angry. Understandably, she called Anderson a sick son of a bitch and said she hopes he suffers. She was further quoted as saying, who the fuck would do something like this to my beautiful baby. She hurt nobody, she harmed nobody. But what do you guys think about this case? What are your thoughts? What's going through your mind when you hear this story? Let me know in the comment section.